Good evening. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerhold, and this is a special edition of Between the Lines Election Night Live. The May, uh, I guess it's a primary election. It is indeed. Uh, the big item on today's election uh, ballot was the Perkins School District uh, levy, continuing operating levy. Uh, it, if, it, if it is approved, it will be the first new money levy approved in the Perkins School District in, I think, 17 years. And if it's not approved, uh, the school district could face uh, being taken over by the state, the finances, and then who knows what will happen. We're going to give you updates on that all night long. That's the hottest uh, item on the ballot. But also tonight in Vermilion, there's a four-way race for the Vermilion mayor, mayoralship. Uh, the top two candidates will go to the general election and face off. Uh, it's a nonpartisan election in Vermilion, and so we'll be talking to those candidates once the ballots come in and uh, the uh, ballots get counted uh, shortly. The, the polls close at 7.30 and the ballots get counted pretty quickly after that, especially an election like this, which isn't packed with issues and candidates. In our region, there's also the Sandusky County Drug Task Force levy which is a uh, new money levy to support a drug task force in Sandusky County, would raise about $700,000 a year, I believe, and it would be a cooperative effort. It already is a cooperative effort between the police departments and the sheriff's office in Sandusky County, but this would formalize it with a uh, regular funding. Uh, also tonight, the Fremont School District levy is a new money levy for new construction. There's a port Clinton Council race between an incumbent and a newcomer. Uh, the incumbent is Margaret Phillips and her opponent is Ken Bacon, so that should be interesting. Margareta Schools Levy also has a measure on the ballot. It's a renewal, I believe, Yeah, to maintain an existing tax. Clyde is the same thing, to maintain an, uh, an existing tax. And that's about it. We're going to have results as soon as they're available. So if you're following any of these races, if you're from Vermilion or Perkins especially, we'll have the results before anyone has the results. You'll know who won by staying right here at Between the Lines Live at SandustyRegister.com. We call this Election Night Live from the Anchor Desk. I'm Matt Westerhold, and I also have some guests tonight. My first guest is Stephanie Walls from BGSU Firelands College, a political science professor. And we're going to talk about the first 100 days and, and just the political atmosphere in Washington and across the country. Uh, also, uh, Erie County Republican Chairman C.J. Cam will be joining us in about an hour or so, about an hour and a half. Uh, Ex-officio Mayor Dennis Murray Jr. will be with us. A little bit later, we're going to be talking to reporter Patrick Fanner about the Port Clinton race. We're going to be talking to our education reporter, Caitlin Nearhood, about these school levies, and she can shed some light on that. Uh, Perkins School Board member Jason Dun Dunlavey is all Dunlaney is also uh, scheduled to appear a little bit later tonight, about 8 p.m. He could be here right when we're getting the final count. So I know that the school board is uh, the school board and the administration have put their heart and soul into this levy. Um, frankly, I hope it passes. I hope it is approved. And we did endorse it as an editorial board at the Sandusky Register. Mr. Dick Brady is going to announce, make an announcement tonight about his political future, Sandusky City Commissioner. I wonder what that could be. And also, Erie County Commissioner Matt Old will be joining us. He's, a, he's in his rookie year, so we're going to find out how that's going for him. And then we're going to have some call-ins a little later in the program when we get the results. And again, you'll get the results here first, fast, furious, best, complete. You can't get it anywhere but right here. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com, brought to you by Between the Lines Live. No, by Serving Our Seniors. When you need help, call Serving Our Seniors, 419-624-1856. We're in the office now. Usually we're out there in the Market Street studio, but the design desk is, you know, um, snug up against the studio and they're putting out a paper tonight so we brought it back here in the office which we used to do fairly often but less often lately but we do bring election night live to the anchor desk uh, with that um, Julie Burns is producing this edition of election night live Julie you want to say hello Hi. 
Thank you for being with us. Make sure you tell all your friends to tune in to SanduskyRegister.com right here, right now. We're live, right, Jilly? Yep. Yep, we're live. With that, I want to introduce Stephanie Walls from BGSU Firelands College, Assistant Professor of Political Science. Thank you for being back on Between the Lines. Oh, thanks for having me back. I always enjoy our conversations, and, you know, it's been uh, an unusual uh, first 100 days. Would you Would you agree? It's been, it's been a dynamic and eventful <laughs> first 100 days. <laughs> uh, you know, it seems that in, in uh, President Trump's base that he continues to enjoy support, mm -hmm. but nobody's changing their mind in his base. Um, but there's been a lot of consternation in the media, certainly. Right. The New York Times and the Washington Post have been leaders in that regard. Uh, uh, it seems like there's a new story every day about right. potential corruption or... Uh, so what do you think of the first 100 days? Well, I think, you know, what's, what's noteworthy, I think, in any first 100 days is watching an individual transition from the candidate to the president. Mm -hmm. And so for us, that's been, I think, particularly interesting because President Trump is not a politician, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of his supporters liked about him. We know right. that there were a lot of voters who wanted someone who was kind of anti-establishment. And so so that makes this time a little more interesting because he's he's not a politician. He doesn't have that experience. And so watching this transition from campaigning to governing, I think has been interesting. And I think it's been bumpy, um, which I think regardless if you're a, a supporter or not, we would expect, right? Because this is someone who doesn't have that background in politics, doesn't have that skill set and the knowledge, and so we've been watching him try to pull that together to, to govern. And he's done so many things that are um, just uh, unusual from embracing dictators, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was the Egyptian president, uh, the, Philipp the, the, the president of the Philippines, mm -hmm. a strong man, uh, certainly Vladimir Putin. Right. Um, do you find that unusual or does that concern you as a, a, a person who observes the political uh, landscape? Well, I, I think it's it's definitely noteworthy. I mean, I, I understand the need for... Is it for, frightening? Well, <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me say first, I understand the need for diplomacy, you know, and mm -hmm. in this world, we certainly have a mix of authoritarian regimes mm -hmm. and different types of authoritarian regimes and a variety of democratic regimes. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate the need to work diplomatically with other leaders. At the same time, I would agree that some of his comments seem to cross line, you know, into comments that indicate admiration, that are complimentary, which again, I understand the need to be diplomatic, but right. it definitely gets our attention um, because you just, I guess we being citizens in a democratic country, we want to see there being a firm line of mm -hmm. the type of behavior we expect from other mm -hmm. leaders. And so I, I am interested to see what's going to come from this relationship with, with Duterte um, from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I know he's been extended an invitation, but obviously he's on a lot of people's radar, you know, as someone who, um, you know, has not been scoring high with regard to human rights um, and due process. Atrocious and that record. Sort, yeah. So, so yeah, these things definitely get. And our then attention. there's the North Korea mm -hmm. uh, problem, um, and that certainly, you know, is no longer um, the I, don't, I forget what they call it the delayed. What what do they call that? How they've handled North Korea, um, where it's tolerance, tolerance right. for the regime there. Mm -hmm. um, but President Trump recently said he'd be happy to meet with. Uh, the president yeah. over there. I think he said it? honored. He would be. He'd be honored. So. To uh, and this is a man who allegedly, you know, killed his uncle mm -hmm. and caused his brother's own death to maintain this grip on power. Right. So should is is are people like me <laughs> overly sensitive and fearful? You know, because <laughs> I'm fearful. <laughs> Again, you know, North Korea is is a significant power in the world that we do need to work with, you know, to some extent. 
I definitely, I definitely understand the concern, especially with some of the word choice. You know, I, I think that it's important if the United States is going to be a, a leader in the world that we do have to establish, you know, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. When I say that it's important to be diplomatic, it doesn't mean we have to be willing to accept all manner right. of, of behavior. And right. so, so yes, I, I mean, I think it's, it is, it's smart to, you know, look at, you know, at this this president, really any president with a critical eye, um, particularly when it's someone that we know doesn't have foreign policy experience, is relying on advisors, it's wise, I think, to watch carefully what's happening. And, and I think that's that's advice that, that I would give really in any circumstance. We need to be aware and, of what's going on and informed. And President Trump seems, some have called him a narcissist. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, is a narcissist being someone who is enamored with themselves. And he's a narcissist in the, the, the office that it has more eyes on it than anyone. And so it really puts him in a predicament because he wants the attention. And at the same time, he wants the freedom to uh, you know, go out in his car and go for a drive. Right. So uh, do you think this is going to wear on him? Is he going to go gray? <laughs> I, I do think it's, and, he, and he's indicated this himself, so I, right. I don't think I'm going out on a limb here, that this is not quite what he expected. It's right. not quite what he signed on for. What gets my attention more than his and need for attention is his need for affirmation. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, you know, we've seen him go out and, and really already engaging in campaigning type right. activities, in his first you days. know, um, and going out and having rallies. I think that he, he needs that, that affirmation. Um, and even I was listening to a recent interview, you know, that was basically asking him, how does he make sure that people are speaking truth to power? Mm -hmm. And he, it didn't really seem to register as something Something mm -hmm. that was important or something that was on his radar yeah. because I think he seems to be centered more on kind of affirming the positions he has mm -hmm. and getting that even positive feedback. Change. Yes, even, even as, as they, they change, change. even and, as they change. And he's certainly done an about face on NAFTA. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and with the NAFTA about face, you know, was the most plausible explanation was it's the art of the deal and, and, and that seemed to make a little sense. Uh, one thing that concerns me is his constant attacks on the media mm -hmm. and fake news and how he refers to, uh, you know, traditional um, news organizations that have a reputation, especially CBS. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the uh, home of Edward R. Murrow, of Walter Cronkite, and it has continued that tradition. Uh, it is a news organization, and on Sunday, he called out the uh, moderator of uh, Face the Nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and he basically accused him of being part of the fake news. Mm -hmm. And I think it's John Dickerson said, uh, you mean me personally? And he said, yes, you. I, and then he said, I love Face the Nation. I call it Deface the Nation. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, you know, he doesn't seem to understand, am I right in believing that he doesn't really understand what fake news is? I would agree with that, yeah. and and I think I think a lot of this comes from his desire to control the narrative. Right. You know, I mean, and and we've seen that from the beginning. You know, even with the way he characterizes his win, you know, he's never talked about it in terms of how close it was. It's always in talking about it as if it were some sort of mandate. Right. You know, and so I think you know he has demonstrated a desire to control the narrative about his views, about his campaign about what he wants to do, about the success that he has or hasn't had. Mm -hmm. And I think that it seems to me that any other effort to control that narrative is is threatening. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would agree, you know, the, the term fake news, as I understood it, came from kind of all of these fake social media accounts right. and people just really just spewing out completely made up information. Fake news. Yes, it wasn't about information that you don't agree with. That's right. And so, but that that switch was made pretty quickly, you know, we're right. taking that term and then using it to describe actual news media outlets. Right. You know, legitimate news media mm -hmm. outlets such as CBS or CNN or the New York Times. Yeah. Um, he also, during that interview with John Dickerson, talked about President Obama 
and again made the claim that, effectively made the claim that President Obama ordered him to be surveilled mm -hmm. when there's no evidence of that. And so is, is Donald Trump a perpetuator of fake news? Well, or does he, he seem to be? He, Call him out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he definitely develops his own narrative, narrative regardless yes. of, of whether or not it's rooted in, in facts as we know them right. or not. And I think it makes things very confusing for the average right. citizen who's just trying to figure out what's going on. So then you go back to that base his base, uh -huh. do you think they're ever going to realize that they made a terrible, terrible mistake? <laughs> well, it, it has That's been interesting. That's just my opinion. <laughs> It has been interesting to see yeah, how people have been reacting, right. and you're right that the people who have voted for him within just a couple of percentage points still feel very strongly that right. they made the right decision. Right. And I think the reason for that is because they voted for him because he was something different. Right. He was something kind of running against the status quo, someone who would come in and do the unexpected. Right. And that is exactly what he's, That's doing. what he's doing. He is, you know, he doesn't show really any um, acknowledgement for kind of process, procedure, procedure, norms, mm -hmm. he just kind of comes in and does what he wants and that's why his supporters liked him was because he said he would do that. Right. And so that's what he's doing. So if right. you measure his performance that way, he's meeting expectations. Yes. Um, what's interesting is that he's also meeting the expectations of the people who don't like the him. Um, because they, you know, people who did not vote for him thought he was going to come in and right. not know what he was doing and, you know, make decisions they didn't agree with. And he's done that too. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why so much of this hasn't, I don't know, it hasn't come out as being particularly noteworthy. I think mm -hmm. people keep waiting for this like aha mm -hmm. moment, mm -hmm. but in a very real way, again, if you like him or don't, he's doing exactly what people expected. Yes. Yes. And I think what gets our attention is when someone does something we're not expecting. Right. <laughs> and he's just, he's managed to kind of, you know, fall into this area where whether he's making you happy or disappointing you, he's, he's doing what you thought. And he's a cliffhanger. Yeah. It, it's, uh, stay tuned for the next episode right. of Donald Trump. So, um, and we have to finish up, but I want to ask you, do you think the American voter is going to come to some sort of resolution of this? Do you think in two years or four years, things are going to be back to normal or the abnormal is the new normal? Well, I think it's going to depend a lot both on the choices the president makes and the decisions that the voters make with regard to what information they want to know and what they do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, for the president, he is going to have a decision to make. You know, if he's going to kind of keep churning things up like this, I think it's going to wear on him. I think mm -hmm. it already is. And so if he's in this for the long haul, he's going to have to try to find a more comfortable Maybe pace. he should vacation, maybe at so, Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> he has some options. <laughs> um, but as far as the voters go, you know, from a, the, per, the perspective of of political science, you know, what concerns me is that people don't seem to have an accurate idea of what this is supposed to look like. You know, even with regard to the media, you know, the media has been historically seen as an additional check on government, and he's kind of rejecting that. And people, they don't know that that's, mm -hmm. you know, that the media and politics have been very hand much in involved, yeah, for the, uh, the history of our country. Uh, uh Part of it, you know, yeah. we, we, we had an editorial in the newspaper this weekend about fake news, real news, and effectively we're the descendants of the founding fathers, newspapers, mm -hmm. media, uh, and we are the guardians of freedom and democracy, mm -hmm. and that's what we are. And we, and we have to be able to report, gather and report our news, and uh, he doesn't seem to accept that. Right, and that's very significant. Right. And so, you know, what I would hope is that we can raise more awareness as to how our system is supposed to work, the value of checks and balances, the value of the Constitution, the value of the media and politics. Um, and I think that's that lack of information that's mm -hmm. causing people to maybe not be as, as shocked by all of this as you would want them to be. Yes, yes. And in the end, he is the president. Mm -hmm. we, we want him to succeed. And, you know, there's always hope. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you want him to succeed. I mean, he's the president of the United States. This is right. your country. This is our country. And we want him to succeed. Mm -hmm. As much as, uh, you know, we might personally not like him having won that office. Right. 
Yeah, we certainly always want to see the country, you mm -hmm. know, stronger in the next four years, doing better, um, you know, certainly politically, economically, socially, and so. We have to finish up, but do you think okay. he survives? Do you think he survives his first term? Do you think he'll be impeached or will he quit? You know, I really am not willing to take anything off the table mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's a number of ongoing investigations. I think his satisfaction with the job mm -hmm. is something he has given voice to right. personally or Recently. dissatisfaction yes. with the job. Yes. Um, I really think just about anything is on the table at this mm -hmm. point. Some of it is in his hands. Some of it is not. You know, mm -hmm. if there were some investigation that were to, to progress. And the Russian collusion investigation mm -hmm. seems to have been put on a back burner. Right. Why, why is that, do you think? Is it purposely on a back burner or is this, you know, the, 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 the head of the lion is going to rear, is going to come up, is going to come up from the water and, and there's going to be revelations? I, I don't think, I mean, I agree that there's been enough to serve as distraction to right. kind of keep a, you know, to keep that message mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, on the back burner, as you say. But again, I, I, I think everything is still on the table. Mm -hmm. I think if there was something egregious enough, it will come forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if not, again, it seems like there's enough people who are willing to just kind of let it go and go on to the next mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that if there's, if there's nothing there, you know, that is, again, particularly egregious, I, I could see it fading away too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, this is So stay tuned. A, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, to me, it's a train wreck. And, you know, I, I, I have watched the news, you know, the, and I love CBS. Mm -hmm. I've always been a big CBS fan. And we do have to finish up. We're getting signals. Uh, Assistant Professor Stephanie Walsh, thank you very much for being on the Between the Lines again. On oh, election sure. Night. Yes. We always appreciate your insight. Thank you so much thank for you having me. Thank you very much. Me. Good to see you. Yes, good to see you and too. We're going to be back in just a moment with our next guest, who I believe is. Ex officio Dennis, ex officio Mayor Dennis Murray. <laughs> Chili's pointing. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. 